Now that we've seen the benefits of dividing your publication across multiple InDesign documents and then combining them back together in a book, I want to talk about the ways in which you can organize a large project like this, especially when you're working as a team and you have lots of people trying to edit separate parts of that project simultaneously. Over the years, I've found just organizing that content can save you a few headaches, namely your template files, work in progress documents, and finished publication files in separate locations. In terms of your template files, we've already looked at how you create a template. Now I would put those in a separate folder, quite literally called templates. And if you need to have several different templates, then you stick them in that folder. But then anything that you start to develop that is kind of loose around the edges and you're pulling content in and you're developing it into something that could become final content for your publication, develop that as a regular InDesign file, but in a working folder. When it's at the point where it's ready to be added to the main publication, incorporated into your book, it's at that point and that point only. You then save it into the main project folder, so the root directory alongside your InDesign book, which pulls all of those final files together. It also means that it will be alongside subfolders called document fonts and links. Now, this means that as you are working on those specific final files in the main directory and its corresponding book, each time you open up an InDesign document, it will look for a folder in the same directory specifically called document font. Now that's handy because if those InDesign documents contain fonts you don't have installed on the computer you're working on, providing you copy them to that folder called document fonts, InDesign will install them as you edit the InDesign file. Once you close it down, it will uninstall them. So if you don't have the admin rights to install fonts on a computer, InDesign will get around that issue for you. The other thing InDesign will do when you open up a document is that it will look for a folder in the same directory specifically called links. That's the place where you and all your team members should be putting the copies of their JPEGs, PSDs and illustrated documents that have been placed into your final production InDesign documents. Not only will it make your InDesign project smoother to run because it's looking in one specific place for all the images and not scattered across USB devices and other networks and reduce the amount of time that InDesign will crash, but also it's handy if you do have a missing link if you've got a shared folder somewhere, maybe a Dropbox, maybe it's a OneDrive, then you can ask people that work in your team, if you have got a missing link, put it in a specific place. And once it's been added to that links folder, InDesign will detect it and it will relink to it automatically. Look, I know that this video is not the most interesting thing ever, far from it. But this whole process of putting your magazines together for the first time is going to be stressful. If you can be super organized and if everybody is clear that when they build uh, an article or some content for the full magazine, if they add the images in the right places, any fonts they've used in that folder called document fonts, then the whole process will become more streamlined and it will reduce the stress. You do not want to be chasing for this stuff on deadline day.